morning, church. There's one thing I never understood. You are always angry at pastors. Good morning, church. Everywhere in the world, you say hallelujah. Uh, Why are you always angry at pastors? What did we do to you? My son Emmanuel told my wife, you don't only wish daddy happy Father's Day, you wish us too, because we are future daddies. So if you don't have a child, don't, don't think you're excluded. Happy Father's Day to everybody, amen? All the men and boys, amen. A way or another, you are a father. I really can't wait to see how Emmanuel and Enoch are gonna grow. Emmanuel wants to be the big brother all the time. And Enoch says, I'm the second big brother. So I don't know that debate, how it's gonna be solved. Amen? Amen. Today we want to learn something very important as well. Amen? I really want you to pay attention. I want you to listen. I always feel bad when people miss things. You know, because when you are in the presence of God, you don't know what God is doing. You know, it's good to listen to this on YouTube. But it's different than when you are here. Because God is doing something every time you are in God's presence. You know? Every time you are in God's presence, God does something. Last week we talked about the technique of a lion. And one of the biggest strengths of a lion is to isolate a prey. So the devil will always isolate you so he can destroy you. Then my wife asked me a question. Is, isn't Jesus the Lion of Judah? Does he do the same? Hmm. Amen. And then somebody else asked me, can God isolate you? I'm going to answer those today. Amen? When God isolates you, when the Lord or the King isolates you, and we are going to understand that. Amen? Yes, God can isolate you. But from the get-go, let me say this to you. The devil isolates you from the group so he can destroy you. But God isolates you within the group. Amen? Amen? God isolates you within the group. And we are going to understand why and how it's, do it's done. But God does not isolate you until you reach a certain level, a certain place in the journey. We are sanctification ministry. So talking about the process of sanctification is going to be our entire life. We always talk about the process of sanctification. Where you go from being a spiritual baby to a mature Christian. That journey is not an easy journey. And in the process of that journey, it comes a time when God begins to isolate you but within the group, and I'm gonna get there. Let's read first. Um, now let me go with Ephesians first. Ephesians chapter two, verse 10. For we are his workmanship, okay? Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Jesus 
we know him as our Lord and Savior. Okay? If you only know Jesus as your Savior, then everything I teach don't make sense for you. You need to get to know God as your king. Mm -mm -mm. When it comes to salvation, God looks at all of us the same way. We are all the same in the eyes of God. He wants to save each and every one of us. But when it comes to the kingdom of God, Panama, when Jesus is king now, uh -uh, we are not the same. And I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Until Jesus becomes your Lord and your king, you will not understand what I'm talking about. It's not good works that saves us, but God saved us so we can do good work in his kingdom. Now, when God becomes your king, and you understand that, you become partner with God in, in the making of his kingdom. That's when the isolation comes in. Amen? That's why you see we are all saved by the same Savior. But we are very different. We may all come to the same church, listen and hearing the same teaching, but we are different. And some excel, some don't. Do you know why? Because there are principles we need to understand. God cannot become your partner in his kingdom unless you understand that he is your king. Everybody likes the savior. He died for me. He did this for me. He did that for me. Oh, grace. Grace, 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 grace. Ma, ma, ma. Yes, all of that is good. Uh, but if that's the whole theology that you have, it's very poor. The theology of the kingdom of God comes with responsibilities. Uh. Amen. Amen. Uh. Amen. Now, I'm not going to give too many verses because I want to go to Ezekiel. As your king, you owe three things to God. Loyalty, surrender, obedience. Loyalty, surrender, and business. Uh, obedience, sorry. People in the United Kingdom, in Belgium, everywhere there's a king, they should understand the Bible very nicely. Because if you are a British person, you do everything to put a smile on the face of who? You know when the king smiles because of you, huh? Uh-huh. As children of God, as citizens of the kingdom of God, we should be happy to put a smile on the face of God on the face of our king. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Loyalty, surrender, Hallelujah. obedience to the will of God. Hallelujah. Everything God does, you can call all the angels you want. They will not do anything in your life out of the will of God. You can do anything. You can call whoever you want. Nobody, nobody is bigger than God. Amen. And there's nothing you can do out of the will of God. We all loyalty, surrender, and obedience to God's will. But this is what happens, people of God. Jesus saved all of us, and I'm going to demonstrate that to you in Ezekiel soon. Now. He can save all of us, but then it's a journey that you have started to maturity. 
God is so loving that he gave you a will. You are free to do whatever you want. You are free to say, Jesus, you know what? I'm just okay that you saved me. But I'm not okay to going to, to worship you in church. God is going to say, that's okay. You don't have to surrender your will to God. You don't have. You don't have to. We have seen pastors who come to church on Sunday and say, hey, listen. There was this guy who was a pastor. I don't know if he won the lottery. And then he went to his church and said, I was looking for money. Now I have it. I stepped down. Amen. You can step down from ministry if you want to. It's your will. And God will say, that's fine. But there are consequences to running away from the will of God. As king, the first step you learn as a Christian is to surrender your will. I have no will anymore. You see some people work like crazy. They wake up early in the morning. They are always there for God's work. They have headaches because they did not sleep. They were praying for others. You say you have a headache, but God say, wake up at 2 a.m. Pray again. You have no will. You surrender everything. That's why sometimes when you complain, we look at you and we say, that's you. But when it comes to me, my will died long time ago. It died. I gave it all. I surrendered it to the king. Listen to me. Your job, your mandate, what is mandatory to you is to be loyal, to surrender, and to obey God in his will. Your mandate to God is to be loyal, to surrender, and to obey God's will. Oh, yeah. Now, your mandate from God. I say you to God, and then from God to you. Now, your mandate from God to you is to do the will of God in the kingdom. Amen. Your mandate towards God is loyalty, surrender, and obedience to God's will. And then, your mandate from God is the purpose now you talk about all the time. Does my life have a purpose? Now listen to what God told me. Listen to this sentence. Your job is not to follow your purpose. Your job is to follow me and I will send you in your purpose. Amana. I am the one who determines what your purpose is because everything has to be done within my will. Amen. Until Jesus is your God, your king, you may not understand everything I'm talking about. We're talking about business, kingdom business. The anointing and everything is for the kingdom of God. But my job is to surrender first. That's why when you come to church, we teach you to surrender. To surrender your body, to surrender everything to the will of God. I have no will. You are a millionaire in the making. But before God makes you a millionaire, He makes you the cleaner of the church. Because He wants to know if you can surrender. Ah! You are a prophet in the making. But God says to you, you go clean the toilets. And when you are cleaning toilets, people are laughing at you. God is trying to lead you to a place where you give your will and surrender to the will of God. If you are always me, 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 myself, hey, uh, me doing that when others are sitting, you are very far from being a God's partner. Very far, I'm telling you, way far than you think. 
Let's read now. Ezekiel 47. And I'm going to show you the difference between grace and empowerment through grace of the Holy Spirit. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. And behold, water was issuing from below the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the temple faced the east. And the water was following down from below the south. And end the threshold of the temple south of the altar. Listen to me. I told you last week, pay attention to the symbolism in the Bible. The Bible said the temple was facing Easter. You need to understand that in the biblical terms, huh, the West is always blessed. The East is always a problem. In the biblical context, guess what the Americans did? Check every West of every town in America. Check every East. If you live on what they call East Street. <laughs> ma, 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 ma. Check. West, East. When God told Moses to build the tabernacle, that's why they were moving. Before they build the tabernacle, they always look at the East. That's where the outside court will be. The Holy of Holies is always on the west. So now, at this point in Israel, the people of Israel have sinned against God and there is drought everywhere. Especially when you come out of the temple. What do you see? The east. The east is dry, completely dry. There's no fruit, there's no fish, there's no river. Everything is destroyed. There's no hope. There's nothing the people of Israel can do to get out of that situation. That's what we call grace. This is the notion of grace. In the Bible, it starts there in the book of Ezekiel. God used to live in the temple. For you to see God, you go to the temple temple to worship God but it came at a time uh, they were no longer able to go to the temple to worship God and because of that everything was destroyed uh, there was drought everywhere and they were in exile and Ezekiel began to see a vision and in that vision now for the first time uh, from where God used to sit uh, this time God is coming out of the temple, going toward people. God is coming from heaven, from the Holy of Holies, to come and die for people, to go where everything is destroyed, to go where there's no more hope, to go to the east. Huh. So if you want to buy your own house, check the address. If you see it's 23rd, check about it. <laughs> I want you to understand. It's biblical. I'm not the one saying it. Maybe I'll teach on that one day to show you East, West, that in the Bible, that positioning. Amen? So now Ezekiel is showing the grace of God coming. This is now God reaching out to people. The water is coming out of the temple. This is what the grace of God does to you. And this is what the Holy Spirit does to you through the grace. Let's read. Number one. Next verse. Then he brought me out by way of the north gate. And led me round on the outside to the outer gate. That faces toward where? Mm-mm-mm. And the water was coming out of the south side, going on eastward with a line in his hand. The man measured a thousand cubics and then led me through the water and it was ankle deep. The grace of God will always get you first to your ankle. 
when you know nothing about God, when you know nothing about Jesus Christ, he will touch you and begin to lead you to church. Ankles is, if you read in the Bible, is the zeal of going. We walk with our feet. The first symbolism here is you moving around for God. You walk, you seek God. That's what the grace does. It gives you the power to go to church. Believe me, there are a lot of people who are not in church today because they could not conquer that battle. It's the grace of God that empowers you and allows you, even when you don't know God, to go to seek God. You find yourself, you love to go to church. You love to go to conventions. You love to go to conferences. You love to go to retreats. You cannot be a Christian when they say retreat. Mm. Church. Mm. That's the first step, uh, is to give you an opportunity to seek God. Uh, that's what the grace is about, uh, to give you an opportunity to seek uh, God. In the east where there was drought, uh, God has given a little bit of water. <laughs> and call deep. Now, when you, when you come to church now, it's our job to begin to teach you. To begin to make a disciple out of you. And because you hear the word of God, you hear the word of God, you hear the word of God, it begins to transform you. It begins to transform you. The next thing you know, let's read. Again, he measured a thousand and led me through the water. And it was... A thousand feet, it's a journey. Will teach you and teach you, and slowly you are changing huh? until by the time you know it, the water is where? Please. On your knees, huh? which is symbolism of what? Prayer and humility and surrender. Amen. Amen. You learn to pray. And in your prayer, we surrender to God in our prayer. When I say to God, I worship you. You I am. Do whatever you want with me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I repent. That's what the knees are for. It's to give you that opportunity to repent, to surrender to God. You begin to kill your own will and embrace the will of God the Father in Jesus name yeah. now let me ask you a question if you water is on your knees does that mean it ceases to be on your ankle so at this point water is here and here I don't, you cannot say you pray a lot but you don't like to go where Jesus is Ma, ma, ma. I want you to understand. Santa <laughs> Gloria. Now you begin to pray. Now you begin to learn to surrender yourself to God. You begin to repent of your life. You are like killing, kill my flesh. I don't want my flesh anymore. I want to be yours, Jesus. And then he says, and he measured a thousand and led me through the water. And the water was at the loins. Productivity. When you surrender, when God knows you live for his will, that's when he wants you to produce now in his kingdom. That's why you become a partner to God. You begin to work together. You invest your time. He invests his anointing. You invest, hallelujah, your money. He invests his grace. He begins to invest in you for the sake of his kingdom. That's when God begins to isolate you. Yes. Oh, yeah. I love young men. Young men, come on. 
Come on, young man. Young man, come on, all of you. Young man, come on. Why are you running away? Mama, mama. Come on, Moses. If we can wish you happy Father's Day, we can bring you in front. <laughs> Listen, these people can be one group. They can be praying in the same church. They can be praying. You could be like, you have a group on campus, you pray together. You have a group at work, you pray together. Or, in this case, best scenario, you pray in the same church. You hear the same teachings, but when you surrender, depending on how you surrender your will to God, God begins to isolate you. It doesn't mean he's gonna take you away from your friends, but it's just that you begin to develop suddenly you begin to go in your own direction. We pray at church, but when you get home, you just want to pray more. It's God's isolating you. It begins to shape you according to the purpose he wants to give to you. You are of the same church, but suddenly, whether you like it or not, God is dropping ideas of you being a millionaire. You know, it's God isolation. I'm not talking about cupidity, love of money. There are people who run away from God. I don't want millions. God say you'll be a millionaire. Suddenly, in your prayer, you begin to feel like you should be a millionaire. God begins to put that in you to understand what it means to be one in the kingdom. You all pray in the same church, but suddenly you begin to feel like you should be the one to give more in that basket. He's isolating you. Hey, Yama. So that's why in church, never say, why is it that I'm the one who always prays more? Because God is isolating you. We all give offering, but you feel like you should give more. Is isolating. When you have nothing, God tells you pray for three days. You think you're praying for three days for God to resolve your problem. After three days, say, okay, now that you are done with that prayer, take five thousand dollars, give Pastor Joe. It's not about the money. He's training you to surrender with $5,000 because he knows he'll make you a billionaire. But you need to learn to surrender to his will no matter the money you have, no matter the anointing you have. You are a prophet in the making. You know, with due respect, if you are a prophet today, they welcome you with a red carpet. I've seen my friends, they got out of the car. Daddy, hey. So if they tell you you are going to be a prophet, you see yourself on red carpets and everything, but God say, go clean the toilet. Do you know why is it? God wants you to learn to surrender. On your loins, uh, it's about productivity. That's when you begin to produce. Uh, it's just like in one family. I love this family, I can tease them all the time. <laughs> so Mama Tina and the family, they used to have the same name, all the sisters. But when it comes to productivity, God begins to isolate. She becomes wisdom, Ayema. You see, she becomes wisdom, huh? Because she's going to give birth to Vanya, Tanya, uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Tabitha, right? That's, that's what you're going to produce, huh? By becoming a wisdom. He begins to eye. Mama Rosalie used to be a Sebastigari. 
<laughs> but God did not go too far. He gave her a name that looks like Seba Sigari Sama. <laughs> Sometimes you could be a Sebastigari, but you become Umuvu <laughs> Vuevue. It's complicated. Yes. Amen. Amen. God is isolating. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, yeah. You are sisters today. Tomorrow we don't know. Saidi name is going to disappear. One of you will be Gabu Gabongo. <laughs> Another one who becomes Smith. <laughs> Another one who becomes Le Charpentier. <laughs> Amen. God begins to isolate you for the purpose. Do you understand when God isolates you? It's for productivity. It's because of what God wants to do. But in the processor, he's going to teach you to surrender, to put a smile on the face of the king. If God tells me to give this young man $2,000, it could be very hard for me. But I'll do it, not because of him, because I want to put a smile on my king's face. It's a training. Maybe you are here, we don't know your future yet. We don't even know your purpose yet until you surrender completely. When you surrender completely, that's when God is going to isolate you. There are great businessmen here. They are in the making. But when God is saying to you now, clean the toilet there, you're like, me? Is it in the book of Genesis? Is it Genesis 22? Two? Genesis 20, verse 2. Can you check that? It must be Genesis 20. No, 22, 2. I think it's 22, 2. Let's check that, please. Do you understand, young man? God did not call you to become him. But you don't know who you really are until you surrender. Because that's when there's no will, your will is not working anymore. That's when the will of God starts now. That's when the purpose starts. He said, take your son. Can you turn and look there? Imagine that son is you. Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. Ma, ma, ma. Abraham was like, God, this was not part of the conversation. Right? Was this part of the conversation? When God called Abraham, what did he say? I will make your name I'll give you nations. Now the only son you give me, take your Kenasayaba. Oh, I bless God. He gave me a house. Tomorrow he said, take that house. The trip, the journey of becoming a disciple and a mature Christian, for God to isolate you, God has to see complete surrender. Amen. Now, can you imagine if you are the father and God said, take that son of yours. When God is speaking to you, you look at your wife, she's sleeping peacefully. And you're like, what am I going to say to her? Mama, mama, I feel for this man, Abraham. Sarah. A little girl, only 16 years old, she gives birth. She'll be standing before the Mikuzaria. I gave birth for you. Eh? I, I'm a pastor. I hear all kinds of stories. Now, in, 
90 years old. When you are just 35 here in America, they say to you, that's, that's a dangerous pregnancy. 35, 90! Her bones are like, goom, goom, goom. She gives birth, and you take the son, you say, I'm gonna sacrifice him. That day, Sarah was going to become gently. <laughs> Amen! No, I'm telling you, until you surrender completely, this is something impossible for Abraham to do. But Abraham is like, my will died a huh? long time ago. I'm going to put a smile on your face. Huh? Then I'm going to face Sarah and the rest of the community. Productivity responsibility that's how God isolates you in a family where everybody likes to fight you suddenly feel like you should be the peacemaker you know the consequences of that every punch it's on you now isolation Amen? Amen. Did you think? Did you read that? Now, can you imagine if you're the son God wanted you to be sacrificed by your dad? Shama says, Briere d'autorité. Daddy, I mean, I will hear all this. Amen. If he was asked today, it's not Abraham who was going to tie Isaac, it was Isaac who was going to tie his father. <laughs> Surrender. Hallelujah. Surrender. The purpose you're looking for in life, you're not going to find it in your imagination. You are going to find it in the will of God. You need to surrender. You need to surrender. Yes, and I, I did this deliberately to say, parents here, all of us here, when you are raising a child, it's a lot of work, but when you are raising a child to be a child of God, what you don't understand is you are putting more people available that the king can use. It's a lot of work, but that's how you contribute to the kingdom of God. That's how you contribute. Young man, today is Father's Day. You may blame your father all you want, but one day you are going to become one. Be one that surrenders to God. Be one that surrenders to the will of God. Amen? Be one that surrenders to the will of God. When you completely surrender, that's when God begins to isolate you. That's why we are here. God will never ask you to clean those toilets because you have not surrendered. But you ask somebody else. And you know what you think? Ah, that one deserves to do that. That one is on a journey to become a millionaire. That one is on a journey to become a pastor. That one is on a journey to become a prophet. That one is on a journey to become an apostle because that's how it works to God. You come to me, you surrender to me. Now I send you to the world uh, with my power, with my blessings, with my grace, with everything. Uh. Thank you very much. That's why, that's why the Bible said, do not touch my anointed uh, because God knows uh, this man uh, was ready to sacrifice his only son for me. If you wanna touch Abraham, you are in trouble. Uh. You are in trouble uh, because now Abraham uh, has become a God's partner in the business uh, of the kingdom. Uh. You know, there are people who call me and say, Pastor Joe, 
I was having a nightmare like somebody was choking me and, and I screamed in the name of Jesus. They did not stop. Mama, mama, mama. <laughs> Whereas others, the devil will stand by their bed. I wake up and say, what are you doing here? They sent me to choke you all. So why didn't you do it? I couldn't. I tried. What's the difference? Do you think God has favoritism? God isolates you when you surrender. When you surrender to the will of God. Pastor Joe tells you, could you please help us here? Pastor Joe, is that the job to give me? You are very far from isolation. You're still proud. Surrender to God. Surrender to his will. Surrender to his will. Maybe my job is to pray for you. You become 10 times richer than me. If that's what God wants, that's what I'll do. Because my will is, is dead. I live for the will of my Father. Now let's go. Look now. After you surrender, after God isolates you, and you do the work of God, God saved us to do good work in his kingdom. That's what the Bible says. Seek ye first what? That's your job. Your job is to follow Jesus, to seek him. He will now give you back to the, to the world and his kingdom with a purpose. Does that make sense? Now look what happens now to the east. Again, he measured a thousand and it was a river this time. It was a river that could not pass through for the water had risen. It was deep enough to swim in, a river that could not be passed through. And he said to me, son of man, have you seen this? Then he led me back along the bank of the river. And I went back, I saw upon the bank of the river very many trees on the side and on the other, okay? And he said to me, this water flows toward the eastern region. How, how many times have you re read eastern? Eastern means drought, bad side. You, you were just on the bad side no long ago. But one day, on that bad side, there'll be a river of life. On that bad side. Listen, down into the Areba, and when it enters the stagnant waters of the sea, the water will become fresh. Eh? And wherever the river goes, every living creature with which swarms will, will live, and there will be very many fish. Listen, in this region of the east of America, the DMV area, there will be a river of water. A river of water that is going to come huh, from a church that has surrendered to God. Amen. A church that has surrendered to God. And suddenly there will be many fish. Do you know what fish represent? Souls that we are praying for. There will be many souls in this church. Hallelujah. And everybody will be living. Hallelujah. That the waters of the sea may become fresher. And everything will live where the river goes. It's a journey. God isolates you to cause the glory of God. He isolates you to bring back life uh, for those who are dead. Uh, he isolates you to bring back the water for every region that was uh, dry. Uh, mama, mama. It doesn't matter how bad you used to be. It doesn't matter how bad you are right now. Take the journey. Every time it will go a thousand cubics. So it means it's not automatic because you came to church today, you're already a prayer warrior. You have to walk a thousand. 
Yeah, mama. And it's not because you are praying that you're already productive. You have to work another thousand yeah, cubic, sir. And it's not because you are praying, inviting, preaching, hallelujah, prophesying and everything that you're already giving life. You need to work another thousand cubic. Uh. feel the power you can you can hold on to your own will that's your decision to make but for some of us our will dared died long time ago long time ago child of God let me ask you a very be honest, but answer to your own heart. When that lady was praying from 9 to 2 a.m., what were you doing? Now, do you think when it comes to the kingdom, you are the same? When it comes to Jesus as the Savior, we are all. And when it comes to the king, he is saying, you're not even worthy for me to come to your silver springs. You need to sanctify yourself for how many days? Seven. And you think you can just get everybody the same when it comes as king? That's a lie. We are all children of God. We are all, yeah, we are. But we are partners with God in a different way. That's why God says about Abraham, should I do anything without telling? think God can tell you before he does anything? It depends on how friend you are to God. It's true. These are spiritual principles. I'm married to Rosalie. My entire intention now is on who? Because we have a partnership called marriage. It's true. And I cannot treat other women the way I treat Rosalie. There's a partnership here called marriage. Amen? So it's always going to be different. If you have a partnership with God, it's going to treat you as such. It's true. And nobody will touch you. You'll be very upset. Because he knows that that friendship was made in a long journey of sacrifice and surrender. Now think about it. They started in high school and now they've it's seven years of marriage. You think you can touch that man? Or that lady? The husband will become gently. Because of the, the how long the journey. Does that make sense? Don't just be friends to God. Be a sweetheart to God. Be a partner in business. You know, this time at our convention, we are going to have a financial webinar where we are going to talk about finances and pray about finances. It's very important, especially for, for all of us, you know, because, because I think you even have a better chance than us. At your age, I did not have a credit card or a debit card. But you already have that chance, you know. But what I'm seeing is one day in that financial webinar, 
it's going to be a financial webinar of millionaires. And it's going to be led by some of you that are still young today. But in the meantime, if God say, lay on this floor, what do you do? Because that's how you learn to surrender. Does that make sense? Hey. May we give our friend praise. Mama. Let's give our offering. When I was a kid, my mom used to send me to do things a lot. And you know when you're a kid what you say, eh? Can you go do this for me? You go. Second time, third time. Para mi, para mi. Right? <laughs> Why always me? Why always me? Always me. Always me. Because we are isolating you. Amen. You notice that the children that you used to send to do things a lot, even though they complained, today they are better citizens. I'm telling you. Because you were isolating them already. The ones that think that they are loved because nobody tells them to do anything, they're just sitting there eating and watching TV. Don't be that kind of a child in the house of God. All you do is just come on Sunday, sit and stand up and go. Those whom send God is sending today, those who God is giving a hard time today, do this, do that, tomorrow. Amen? Ah, the story of Cinderella is true. Eh? Everything Cinderella do, do. What the mother did not know, she was preparing her to be a princess. Even though she was not born in a royal family. So if God tells you today, do this, do this, don't complain. Don't say, Pagami, Pagami. I have a cousin of mine in Kinshasa, we call her Kakangai. She said it in Ingala. If you send her to do something, Kakangai, 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 Kakangai. We call her Kakangai. But that isolates you. Amen? I'm going to invite the kids to come. They have something for us. Happy Father's Day. So our kids didn't want to miss this opportunity. Just to wish you a happy Father's Day. F. Always being forgiven. A. Helps protect his family with an with an armor of God. T. Being a teacher and being an example. H. A helper in time of need. E. The memory of a father is everlasting and encouraging. R. A father is respected, responsible, and righteous. Happy Father's Day. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did somebody take a picture of that? Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Keith. And I want you to understand every father was once a baby. Now we have our convention is coming soon and next Sunday we are going to have soccer. A soccer game in the afternoon. We'll provide some pizza and drinks. That's the only opportunity you have if you are angry at Pastor Joe to kick me. So 
<laughs> That's the opportunity you have. On Thursday, ma, ma, ma. on Thursday, we are going to start our prayer service at 6. Instead of have Prophet Alan uh, Kariaku, who is a prophet, but he is led in a session for over 11 years. I can't wait to hear from a prayer warrior. Amen? A prayer warrior. Attach to your God. Attach to ton Dieu. Right? John 15, 4. So invite somebody. Be here on time. Amen? Be here on time. What else is coming? Our convention. When we have convention, if water is here, you are happy to come to the convention. Amen? If water is here, you are happy to pray for the convention. If water is here, you are happy to serve at the convention. Amen? And if water is here, you are in glory. You do everything. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to finish by saying, give you an example for God isolation. In 2003, I was in Kinshasa. There was a conference happening at Bandal Stadium. And I was there as one of the intercessors. I was very poor, believe me. And then they introduced a man of God from the United States. He was a preacher. He said, now we are going to welcome so and so from the United States. You know when you are poor, you look at somebody from the U.S. at that time. Everything about them look good. Amen? Amen. I was on my position pray, praying, and then in my head I'm like, maybe one day they'll introduce me as well as a preacher from the United States. When you have surrendered, God begins to isolate you. I don't know how many people thought about it that day, but I did. Now look at what they did to me. From the moment I'm thinking, I want to be like that man one day coming from America. Somebody came to tell to my ears, hey, where I was standing, where they put me on my post, I could see the preacher. They said, they said, there's too many people on the floor. They need you under the podium. So they put me under the podium, and the preacher from the United States is on top of the, the podium. That was now my position. You know what God does? So I'm doing deliverance. I can hear him preach up there. When he does this, I hear boom, boom, boom. So now you, you're thinking to be like this man, you, you won't even see him anymore. But you have to surrender. After the convention, my sister came with papers. Oh, they want to go open a church in America and the pastor selected you among the people to go start a church in America. Listen, that's more than good news. You need to fill these forms and pay like $5. When she's presenting that to me, my uncle comes out of this bedroom. He says, hey, it's been a long time that I, I just want to give you $10. Now, if you look at everything, the papers, the $10, you say, this is God. I took a pen. I wanted to write my name and I hear clearly in my, in my head, you're not going to America. You're actually going to the Bombashi. I said to my sister, the Lord does not want me to go. I'm going to Le Bombash. My own big brother was very upset with me. What kind of a God is that? He could even keep you at Kinshasa. You have more opportunities to go to Europe. <laughs> it's taking you back to Le Bombash. My brother was very upset. You learn to surrender. Amen? But guess what? Everywhere I go now, I'm a preacher. You see, God is isolating you. God is isolating you. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for blessing us. 
thank you for giving us this day and thank you for all the fathers you are the ultimate father only you can make us fathers we can be men sometimes even with children but we are not fathers we can only learn to be fathers in you Christ so teach us and help us as we continue the journey and we continue to surrender to you and to your will bless this Sunday bless everybody now and forever in Jesus name we pray